Hello and welcome to this presentation on how COVID-19 has impacted cybersecurity. My name is Paul Norris, also known as PJ, and for the past five years I'm a senior systems engineer at Tripwire. However, in my previous life I worked as a technical security manager for many years at a large UK energy provider and a global consultancy firm before that. Sometimes the best way to inform ourselves about how cybersecurity is dealing with a new threat, technology or situation is to just ask. COVID-19 and the resulting lockdowns, quarantines and economic changes certainly counts as situation for cybersecurity. While it would be nice if cybersecurity could take a temporary backseat while people and organisations figure out how to adapt to truly working conditions, the reality is that you can't do things like rapidly shift to working from home, dramatically increase e-commerce over, over brick and mortar sales and massively scale the logistics of delivery without considering how all those changes are secured along the way. Cybersecurity is part of the pandemic response, plain and simple. In order to learn more about how security professionals are dealing with this crisis, Tripwire conducted a survey and I'd like to share some of the results in this presentation. The full results of this survey are on the tripwire.com website. To understand the impact of COVID-19 and working from home has had on cybersecurity, Tripwire partnered with Dimensional Research to examine what security teams have faced and how they're managing the changing threat landscape. This report covers findings from a survey conducted between April the 14th through to April the 21st, 2020, outlining security professionals' top areas of concern in the wake of COVID-19 and how they're responding to new challenges. Tripwire surveyed a total of 345 individuals responsible for IT security at companies with more than 100 employees. Top areas of increased concern included employee home network security, increased ransomware, phishing and social engineering attacks, keeping remote systems configured securely, and keeping remote systems compliant. It's really valuable to understand the makeup of the respondents because it provides insight on how to interpret responses. The even spread across company size and job level is important. That means our responses are pretty representative to the industry overall. The geographic distribution is more skewed towards North America, however. It's valuable to keep that in mind as I present the results to you. Some of the findings in the survey are not surprising. We see 83% of the respondents report a significant increase in employees working from home as a result of the COVID-19 outbreak. We asked the question what statement closely represents their company's approach to employees working from home as a result of COVID-19. Now, for many organisations, the concept of employees working from home is not new. However, what the results show is over half the respondents had to make a rapid shift to accommodate the change to work from home. This means new technology had to be invested in and implemented. Existing solutions had to be scaled up to meet the new demand and employees who never work from home had to have equipment purchased for them to continue to do so. However, as the survey shows, 7% of the responses state the employees didn't work from home before COVID-19, and they still don't today. There could be a number of reasons why this is the case. It may well be down to the cost of investment in technology that permits them to work from home could be too great. Or perhaps employees may be working on restricted systems which are not accessible from outside the organisation, typically seen in government accounts and secret environments. This is another example of what I expected from the survey. How prepared was your security organisation to deal with the impact of COVID-19? Alarmingly, 12% of the respondents stated they were not prepared and struggled to make it work. This would suggest that good business continuity planning had not been put in place or didn't know how to deal with remote working and reduced workforce. Many of you have heard the term snow day. This is where employees are not able to get to work due to bad weather or no public transport. So they work from home or take the day off, which would have minimal impact to the business. 
The COVID-19 outbreak is a dramatic extension of a snow day, lasting months instead of days. The impact of this is much more significant to the business. Those who are very prepared have already had work from home policies and infrastructures set up and a good planned out business continuity plan in place. The 29% who said that it was simple to adjust demonstrate the importance of testing the business continuity planning periodically. The remaining 56% state they had a plan but was hard work to implement. Why was this the case though? Were business continuity plans written but thought this would never happen? As I mentioned in my introduction, I worked in the information security industry for many years and played an important part of business continuity. Of those plans created, it, gen it was generally about keeping the systems up and running and the lights on. I suspect no one thought they had to act out these plans, reacting to a global pandemic that brought the whole world to a slow crawl. Moving forward, this outbreak will make organisations stop and think more about business continuity and have documented plans to execute if we're in this situation again. One area of note where there is a difference between North America and EMEA is around COVID-19 related attacks. There is a significant difference in reported attacks between the two, with EMEA reporting far fewer COVID-19 related attacks than North America. This data suggests that attackers may be targeting North America more, though we can't rule out under reporting at this sample size. It may also be too early to determine if a company has been attacked, as many don't realize until it's much later. Technology can play an important part in this by helping detect changes on critical systems, conduct vulnerability assessments, and reducing the attack service by hardening systems to specific hardening standards such as CIS, ISO 27001, etc. Let's dig into some of the details. When we see that people are more concerned about security than before COVID-19, what exactly are they more concerned about? We asked the follow-up question listed here. It makes sense that practitioners would be concerned about employees' home network security, but I predict this particular concern will wane over time. It's unlikely organisations are going to start securing those home networks. It's much more likely that other concerns will come to the forefront as organisations just deal with how to deploy, manage and secure assets in an untrusted network environment. If you're forward-looking, Worry less about the employee's home network and more about how to gain the visibility and control you need into the corporate devices deployed anywhere outside the office. Technology can play a key part in this process. With more and more solutions being hosted in the cloud, there is less dependency to have VPN connection open to the company. This in itself reduces the risk of unattended remote devices exposed to corporate networks. But the thought here, updates such as operating system patches, antiviral signatures, and other solutions that run on the remote endpoints to increase security can be updated when the device reaches the internet. One of the points in this question that jumped out at me were 27% were concerned about the security shortcuts made to enable remote access to legacy systems. Now let's think about that for a second. If we're compromising security controls on less secure legacy systems, hmm, I'll let you ponder that thought for a second. And finally, 45% of respondents are more concerned today with increased ransomware, phishing and social engineering attacks, and so they should be. These attackers appeal on human nature. Phishing links on how to claim loss of income, school notices, health warnings and other fake news out there to cause mass panic. All these types encourage the victims to click on links, open attachments and visit sites that have been compromised to harvest information. Security researchers have discovered fake COVID-19 sites showing statistics and maps but behind the scenes are harvesting personal data and dropping malicious payloads which could lead to compromising systems. Phishing emails are now circulating that contain fake health advice, 
inland revenue refunds and fake information about school closures. What parent wouldn't be tempted to click on such links? So, as previously mentioned, the attackers will take advantage of human nature. Everyone on the planet is talking about coronavirus, speculating what will happen, criticising governments, companies and other organisations, so why would it be any different for hackers to have their say? Security starts with visibility. You can't secure what you don't know and we wanted to know how the COVID-19 pandemic was affecting security visibility. 64% reported that security visibility is more difficult because of employees working remotely, whereas 50% somewhat more difficult, 14% much more difficult. Once again, the breakdown is very important. What's surprising about these results is they point out the shortcomings of solutions that were deployed for assets on the corporate network. There aren't really any technical reasons that the same tool providing system updates, status or backup status shouldn't be able to handle the same task in a more distributed network environment. Don't get me wrong, there's lots of good valid reasons out there, but what we're seeing is the gap in the products deployed for these purposes. It's especially interesting that vulnerability assessment shows up on this list as number two. If you're using agents for vulnerability assessment, then the location of the assets matters much less. Over the past few years, agent-based vulnerability assessment has become a mainstream option. However, if you're running network-based scans, then assets moving out of the network makes them invisible it might be time to consider an agent-based approach. Additionally, we have policy compliance. There are very few people who get excited about policy compliance, and most of them are auditors. The reality is that compliance isn't going anywhere, and while there may be some leeway in the short term for the shift to re working remotely, auditors gonna audit, as they say. A much higher percentage of respondents said that compliance is more difficult because of COVID-19. Once again, visibility into remote endpoints ranks at the top, in this case for compliance. Interestingly, the second item is more about how to apply the policies in a new, more remote environment, rather than actual assessment. This is where expertise is more important than at all. It's also where a regional difference exists, with 35% of North American respondents checking this box and 42% of EMEA respondents doing so. It seems that EMEA is more concerned about how to apply standards. We also see concern for the sporting infrastructures start to show up here. The expansion to working remotely has focused a lot on the endpoints but all the increased remote access has driven a corresponding increase in supporting infrastructures like VPNs, authentication and other remote access technologies. They need to be secure and compliant as well. So what are the organisations doing about responding to COVID-19? Immediate response seems to be twofold. First, pause new projects and focus on response. Second, figure out if the tools you already have can help. This tactical response makes a ton of sense. It's far easier to expand on an existing tool than source a new one. And new projects are obviously a distraction from the needed immediate response. In other words, no surprises that these two are at the top. However, there are still 28% who are investing in new technology. This may be a good opportunity for companies to increase security posture and invest in remote working solutions, bringing forward projects to cater for demand. It's also interesting to see that it was observed that VPN oversaturation occurs. This would be consistent with companies who didn't have the capacity to expand their VPN. Users would generally default to calling help desks when in fact, by the time they speak to someone, the problem isn't repeatable and has resolved itself. Challenges like this can be easily overcome by educating users about what to expect during the pandemic from company systems. 
On this question, there was a significant difference between North America and EMEA. You can see that EMEA respondents are expanding to current tools and increasing budget at a lower rate than their North American counterparts. Those missing responses are made up for in the we are not doing anything special response. So it seems that EMEA's tactical response to cybersecurity during COVID-19 leans towards pausing projects, acquiring some new tools, and changing little else. This is respective to what we're seeing in the marketplace. I'm based in the EMEA region, and I've definitely seen projects put on hold while there's a focus on coping with COVID-19. But progressively, we're now starting to see those projects that were put on hold come back to life. At the time of this presentation being recorded in June 2020, it's been a number of months since the pandemic really took hold of the planet. It's given companies the chance to adjust, and as some parts of the world are relaxing lockdown controls, there's a new normal starting to form. What about the more strategic, less tactical responses? Well, it looks like practitioners are looking to the future as well. The split here is just slightly different. As an industry, we tend to put tools ahead of staff and skills, which bears out in these results. We also tend to look for new tools instead of doing more with what we have. Organizations that want to have an advantage might do well to flip the top two and focus on more, doing more with existing tools, which would be easier to expand and be less training or ramping up before buying new tools. And don't forget about options to augment the skills you have in-house. Freeing up your skilled employees to do the hard work is a solid strategy in the lean times. It's also good for the retention of that talent. The difference with EMEA carries over here with only 38% of the respondents saying they look, they look to how to expand current tools compared to 57% in North America. Security budgets appear to be somewhat protected in the economic downturn that we are seeing. That's generally true, so it's not overly surprising that we see that now. The majority of respondents will have some increase, with 36% seeing an increase long term. That's good news for practitioners who might just have the tools to do their jobs. If you overlay this on the previous results, we we'll see new tools being purchased to deal with cybersecurity around working remotely, as well as the expansion of current tools. It's also good to see only a small percentage of respondents decreasing their security investment. This may be related to direct impact to their business or investments in other areas not security related. At the end of the day, we all have to figure out how to adapt to these changing working conditions. For security professionals, the good news and the bad news is the same. Security isn't going anywhere. We don't exactly have new problems to solve with remote working, but we do have new environments in which to continue solving the same problems. How are we to deploy and maintain secure systems? How do we ensure systems are compliant? And how do we do so with fewer resources than we had yesterday? Tripwire has been around for over 20 years. We are commonly known for our file integrity monitoring solution, Tripwire Enterprise. However, over the years, our solutions and portfolio have increased. Today, Tripwire products can provide security visibility into endpoints and infrastructure. Tripwire Enterprise focuses on integrity monitoring on various number of endpoints, such as operating systems, network devices, database monitoring, Active Directory monitoring, and cloud monitoring. There's a real-time alerting on changes on multiple platforms ranging from Windows, Linux, Unix, Solaris, AIX, etc. In addition to change detection, Tripwire Enterprise can also help with policy and compliance. 
Tripwire has the industry's largest policy library with over a thousand combinations of policies ranging from the like of ISO 27001, CIS, PCI DSS, Sarbanes-Oxley, NIST, to name a few. These policies are free to customers and can be imported into Tripwire Enterprise. The policies contain tests that we can run on endpoints to determine if the endpoint will pass or fail a specific control. For example, tests such as checking for technical controls like minimal pass password length, encryption states, etc. can be quickly determined and reported on. Tripwire IP360 is our vulnerability management solution. IP360 can help identify and prioritize vulnerabilities with agents and agentless. By using the agent technology in our portfolio, it makes it easier for organizations to secure remote endpoints, checking for changes, ensuring compliance, and checking for vulnerabilities. There are other products in our portfolio, as you can see from this slide, that help complement existing solutions within your organization and help companies with, vis with visibility and securing their endpoints. As we come to the end of this presentation today, I wanted to share with you a few key takeaways from this session. We have seen in the survey results that for many organizations, the concept of working from home is not new, but for many, they have to expand on existing systems to meet the demand. We are almost three months into the pandemic at the time of the writing of this presentation. There has been a shift to remote working and it will be a long while before things go back to normal. But for many companies, the concept of working remotely could be the new normal for them. Therefore, in the short term, organizations are looking to expand their existing tool set, but to secure their future, they're looking at new solutions that could help increase security and gain visibility whilst working from home. And to meet these demands for new security solutions, the budgets will be increasing where revenue permits. Thank you for your time today, and I hope you found it informative. For more information on Tripwire Solutions, please visit our website on www.tripwire.com. Thank you, and goodbye.